am back again with a Women's Team Canada video series and one of my favorites and one of uh, baseball's best kept secrets we're going to talk about the mechanics of the delayed steal. Okay first I want to start with talking about some specific or some facts about the delayed steal. Uh, it is a, a highly successful play. Uh, if we do it correctly there's no reason why any team should ever throw us out. Uh, you don't have to be fast. In fact it's actually designed more for the less speedy runner and it causes defensive confusion and what I mean by that is usually on the delayed steal the defense will panic or freeze and often that translates into errors and lastly uh, I want you to understand that this is a play that can often be done multiple times in the same game okay what who and when uh, what it's, it's just simply a method of sealing a base okay uh, but what the key is to understand it's more about the technique and timing rather than a straight steal of the, the speed and jump. Uh, who, again, it's someone with uh, less speed, uh, and we won't even usually delay with someone that's uh, quick for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, they often draw enough attention to themselves anyways. The other team usually knows they're, they're a threat. And um, you know we're just gonna go ahead and straight steal someone who is fast. Um, when, uh, there's, there's a few times that we can do it. Obviously we want to make sure that uh, we're watching the defense and when they're not paying attention uh, that is a time that we might put the delay on. Uh, and when we say that they're not paying attention we're mainly talking about the middle infielders and the catchers. Uh, if the middle infielders uh, are watching the ball cross home plate to see what's going on at the plate that's a key time to go. Another time is when the catcher often likes to frame the pitch. Uh, there's a delay there and they won't pick up the, the runner stealing. Um, you know, secondary, uh, the pitchers and the first baseman can often come into this. An example with the pitcher, if they have a very quick delivery to the plate and straight stealing is difficult, that's a good time to do the delay steal and counter uh, the actions of the pitcher there. Uh, usually we'll, uh, we'll delay steal when someone's on first base, uh, trying to get them to second base, but another good time to do it is uh, often when there's uh, runners on first and third and uh, usually we can score the runner from third base just by causing a little bit of confusion on the defensive side, uh, countering any plays that they might have to uh, try and prevent uh, stealing first and third, and usually the ball ends up in center field and we uh, get to walk in a, a run from third. Okay, now for the main part of the video, the uh, mechanics and the technique of delayed steal. Uh, there's, there's really simple, two simple points uh, secondary leadoff is one thing that we want to talk about and then actually when you take off okay so when it comes to the secondary lead we want to keep that consistent uh, same as the primary lead we want to keep that consistent so we're not tipping off the the other team in any way uh, and when we talk about a secondary lead uh, it's probably about two to three wide shuffles off the base um, and uh, we also, when we're doing that shuffle, we want to keep our shoulders square to home plate because when we do turn them slightly, that tips off the other team to think that we're, we're starting to run towards second base. So keep it square towards home plate. Uh, and if anything else, what these things do here is if you're not on the delay steal at this time, it will set up future opportunities by staying consistent with your leadoffs. Uh, and, and when to take off is the next thing. Uh, it's very important. Um, so we want to make sure that we finish our shuffle uh, before we take off. We don't want to hop hop and necessarily go right away because they still might be watching us hop. And if that's not consistent with what you normally do on your secondary lead, they could pick that up. Uh, and with that timing, usually what happens is the ball is about to cross home plate right about the time that you finish your last step and then decide to go and that's when everybody is focused to home plate uh, and, and when they're focused to home plate basically the object is, is is to beat the middle infielders to the bag so even if you have a keen catcher who sees you go you're still going to beat the base of the infielders to the bag and if the catcher throws it again we could end up with an error uh, and the last thing I just want to talk about quickly is uh, by diving into second base, it might help with a little bit with the success. And the reason is, is because if the base, uh, the defenders are coming in late, they'll often end up wanting to tag you high. And by diving or, or sliding head first, 
usually keeps you lower as opposed to sliding feet first and having your body higher up in the air and making it easier for a tag. Um, you know, the other thing with the consistency of your leadoff, you should never get picked off at first base. Uh, it's not about the jump, so you don't need a bigger lead, so never get picked off at first base either. So in conclusion, uh, earlier I talked a lot about when you should delay steal, but really that's the coach's job. The coaches will be watching the defense, they'll be watching uh, the middle infielders, the catchers, uh, to see if we can pick up a good time to delay steal. Uh, for example, we might also look at if there's a left-handed hitter at the plate so that that blocks the, blue of the, uh, the view of the catcher. Uh, but your job as players is to really focus on the mechanics and the techniques of the delayed steal. So if, if speed is not part of your game, uh, you should probably take pride in learning uh, how to delay steal um, because if you do it properly and you focus on it, even you can become an effective base stealer.